and welcome to Baldy Tim's Reviews and today I've got a slightly different review for you and the thing that I'm reviewing is, well, I'm actually driving it at the moment it's my Citroen Berlingo Multispace which I've now had since February 2020, it's now October 2020 so what's that, uh, about 8 months that I've had it so in order and I've done quite a few miles in it. Uh, I guess I've, yeah, I've done about 5,000 miles in it. So not an inconsiderable amount of time and mileage to have owned and tested a vehicle. And I thought I'd just review this for you, just in case you're thinking of buying one of these. It's a 2016 one first registered I think in April 2016 so it's a four to five year old vehicle it's not the current multi-space but the one generation before and if you're thinking of buying one of these you might find this review hopefully very very useful so I'm just going to pull in here and just show you around the outside first of all so there we have it we've got the Citroen my Citroen Berlingo multi-space. It's in black. I think it looks pretty good in black actually, especially as it's got the sort of blacked out rear windows. I think it gives it, from some angles at least, almost a sort of a, a van-like appearance to it. And this is a little handy little feature just do a little button down there the actual window glass opens rather than the whole tailgate which is quite handy if you've just got a uh, um, quick little bit to get out also the parcel shelf folds over and this is actually a very strong parcel shelf um, in fact the brochure for this actually shows a Labrador kind of or Alsatian kind of size tog line on that so uh, it's not that I'd recommend that, especially not when you're driving, but it is capable of taking some considerable weight. And of course it's got the full tailgate as well. So there you have it, massive tailgate. And I'm six foot four, and I can kind of just about stand under here, more or less standing up fully. And yeah, you know, you've then got massive amounts of space in there and I'm a tradesman an electrician so I carry uh, all my gear in the back there because it is literally well these actually come in a van version as well these Berlingos so it is actually designed as a van and I think the multi space is just like a they just, when they decided to make a car out of it as well but it's first and foremost a van really, that's how I regard it as. And yeah, you know, go back and give you the full picture. Massive, massive tailgate. You have to make sure you're sort of parked a little bit of a way away from the uh, sort of car behind, you know, uh, otherwise you won't be able to get your tailgate open. But having said that, not as far as you'd think, maybe a couple of foot or something. And anyway, we, we sort of go around this side. And yeah, and that is the multi-space with the boot open. Now the rear doors are actually these sliding things. So you slide them open like that. And normally I've got this in sort of van configuration now with all my gear in there and you can get loads and loads of stuff. Everything an electrician needs in there and the seats actually sort of fold up. They kind of fold up properly out of the way. A lot of estate cars, they kind of don't really fold what I'd call properly away and leave a totally flat load area. But this does, it, they fold right up, you know, fold right up against pretty much the front seat there, leaving so much room. But, but also you can actually tape these rear seats out entirely. 
and on obviously you've got the front door usual sort of thing I'll show you a bit uh, the front in a bit more detail I'll tidy it up and get rid of some of my gear I'll show you that in a bit more detail uh, let's have a little bit of a frontage view yeah quite a smart looking vehicle really it from the front uh, it's the diesel automatic version powered by 1.6 diesel engine so you've got to put the ad blue in although having said that I've never had to do that myself as yet it was probably done when it was serviced uh, a couple of weeks ago I should imagine but it you don't seem to have to put that stuff in very often that's what I'm trying to say so yeah this is the interior as you can see this is the auto version and that is the selector you actually just move that for automatic neutral reverse there is a manual setting there as well and then you can change up and down with these what i'd call these sort of rather silly little paddle things here i never bother using it in this sort of paddle manual mode i don't really see what the point is so I just always drive in automatic. And I'll put it in neutral for now, so that we won't start otherwise. So you've actually, what you've got to do is make sure it's in neutral, and then you've got to put your foot on the brake before it, turning the key and it, and it allowing you to start. So yeah, let's start up this diesel engine and see what we've got. And it's probably not the quietest diesel engine in the world, but it's not too noisy either. And yeah, I've done quite a few motorway drives with my wife and other people in here as well. And uh, you know, it's more than adequately quiet to have a conversation without shouting in it. And yeah, I'm the automatic version I'm being an automatic is such a boon and it just makes driving so much easier and so much more pleasant and the fantastic thing about this automatic is the fuel economy with the auto gearbox on these is actually better than the one with the manual gearbox yeah which I found incredible normally with automatics you take a hit and normally quite a big hit on your fuel economy but you go down a good 20% a lot of the time when you go to an automatic from the equivalent manual on the same car. But this, it's actually a lot better than the manuals. And obviously the, the official figure is somewhere around about 65 to the gallon on average. You don't get anything like that, as you might suspect. You get, but I am getting... I think the worst I've done is 45 to the gallon and it's almost always over 50 to the gallon. I think the most I've had out of it is about 53 to the gallon. Um, but if you sort of average it out as a 50 to the gallon, you're going to be sort of not far off the mark. As I say, that's for the auto version. The manual version, I think it's a little, you'll find it's a little bit less than that. Probably not hugely less, but a little bit less. And yeah, driving along, it's just, uh, we're just driving along at sort of 30 miles an hour. And yeah, it's not hugely quiet, but it's not overly noisy. I'm bearing in mind this is sort of basically a van that's been sort of converted to a car, so it's not going to have car-like uh, sort of quietness and smoothness, but it's not bad, I mean, I can certainly live with it. And what you gain, of course, is the space, yeah, the amount of space you get in these things is incredible, and the versatility as well, I and mean, as you saw, I sort of use this for going around jobs, working as an electrician with all my sort of bits and bobs in the back. But 
if needs be, if I've got uh, at the weekend, I've got people to carry around. I can put the uh, get rid of all my stuff, put the seats down, and you've basically got a very big estate car. But a huge, huge boot, even with the, uh, the back seats kind of up with passengers in them. You've probably still got room in the back for, I'd say, yeah, four big holiday suitcases. Large suitcases, and and that be under that parcel shelf. Uh, you can also then put stuff on top of the parcel shelf as, as well, I guess. Uh, sort of some light things, and yeah, and then there's just so many cubby holes in here as well. And I'll show you those when I'm parked up again. Yeah, you know, it just seems to be so economical to run uh, both in terms of tax and the insurance wasn't too bad either I think that was about just under 300 quid for me which okay I'm in my 50s sort of clean driving record clean license but I didn't think it was too bad I think it's about 280 something like that 280 pounds for the insurance servicing maybe not quite so cheap uh i had a bit of a shock with that i uh a couple of weeks ago i had it serviced annual service no mat and it cost me 600 quid and that's without really needing anything to be done either that was just for the service no mat which is quite steep but there again that was a main citron main dealer and it was a big service Obviously included the MAT fee as well, and they also changed the brake fluid. I think they changed basically every fluid you can on here, and did pretty much everything in a service that can be done on a service. I also put a new battery in my uh, remote control key as well. So I'm hoping that next year it won't be nearly that much. It should just be a minor service next. Yeah, so maybe not the cheapest on the servicing, not if you go to the main dealers and, uh, at any rate. But yeah, from a e economy point of view, or sort of cost of ownership point of view, so I've been very happy with this so far. It seems to be very reliable as well. So no, no problems as yet. No uh, breakdowns or anything, or any problems. Well, the only problem, I guess, was I, I got them to change the battery in the key remote because it seemed to be getting a bit weak. You know, to stand very close to the car to, you know, um, for it to unlock. So I got that changed. And the way this window here is driver's window. I don't know if it will do it now. Oh, there it goes. Kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah it, kind of, it kind of squeaks badly when you uh, sort of wind it up and put it down. But I'm sure I can cure that by putting some kind of silicon or graphene spray on the on the glass and the rubber bits there. And that'll probably lubricate it a bit and get rid of that. And that is literally the only problems I've had with this. Been very very happy. And okay, it's a low mileage example. It had done about third, just over 13,000 when I bought it, and it's now done 18,000. So I've only done 5,000 miles in it. So let's just go for a little, let's just go for a little tour of the inside of the Bolingo multi-space and as you can see it's got these quite snazzy seats with headrests very comfortable actually very comfortable even on long journeys and let's show you a bit of the storage space uh, you've got a quite a big pocket there probably almost big enough to hold a Certainly a one liter, even a possibly a two liter mineral water bottle. And then you've got a little 
cubby at the top there where I've got that nut thing at the moment, but that holds, um, you can put coins and all sorts there. And then you've got another little pocket there, which is just uh, big enough to put a, a bag maybe. Yeah, and coming up to the top there, you've got um, this little uh, tray here for um, bits and pa papers and bits and pieces. And that's actually uh, an A4 size book. So it's more than big enough for that. And a few other bits and bobs as well. And you come over here and you get your two big vents. Well, you can direct those any way as well, you want as well and close them up as well, which makes the dash area look a bit more neat if you close them. You've also got another two, that end and that end over here as well. But coming back into the middle, you've got another little, fairly small tray there with a rubberized bottom to it. So that's a good place to put your sort of coins you also got this here as well. I'm not really sure what you put in there, but <laughs> uh, you know, it's not very big, but it's another little, little cubby hole. Got the glove compartment, which looks like it's going to be huge because, you know, it's my hand and it's like two big hand widths, but you open it up and you've got next to no space in there at all. You know, you've got just a tiny little shelf bit up there, a little thing pocket down there and a little bit that just goes back there I I find sort of not a lot fits in here so I don't really use it but you, you know I suppose you could get a few nicks uh, knickknacks in there I guess uh, I think some of the models of these actually come with um, trays that go under the seats but as this is a more basic model we haven't got those we have got this here and I think another one on that side. Yeah, another one on that side as well. Got the uh, all important mask, of course. But yeah, again, those are sort of pretty small. And I'm not sure what you'd be able to get in there. So I don't tend to use that very much. So not particularly useful ones, those. Something that's a bit more useful is this, you've got this huge shelf at the top, which goes all the way across the whole width of the vehicle keep my beanie hat up there <laughs> um but you could sort of put all sorts of knickknacks up there very useful bit of storage you've also got these uh sort of mirror things just in case you like looking at yourself in there <laughs> Another useful compartment is this above the instrument panel. You've got a flap here and it lifts up. Um, again, that's quite a big, useful compartment there. You can get sort of several pairs of sunglasses in there and bits, other bits and pieces. So that's quite useful as well. And coming down here, you've got another, well, driver side, some storage bins and then the little one down there the little one you can just about squeeze up and put a shopping bag in there so um so you've always got that handy for the supermarket and then there's a few bits and pieces in there and then again continuing the storage theme you've got this massive massive uh bin thing here in the middle you've also got this um Actually comes with a lid, but I've taken the lid off. But it basically looks, there's another one at the back here. And I suppose they're supposed to be ashtrays, but obviously not smoking. Sort of don't use those for ashtrays. Uh, but you can use them to put coins in or pens in like I've done there, if you take the lid off. But again, quite useful. There's, going back here, this is for the rear passengers. You've got a couple of, if you took that out, a couple of drinks holders there. And I'm not sure where the front drink holders are, or cup holders are actually. I don't think it's really got those, unless you took that out and then you'd have a cup holder there. But yeah, if you like your uh, cup holders, it's a bit short on those. 
I suppose you could use these little pockets here, or those little bits there where I've got that nut. Maybe that's supposed to be a cup holder. Let's just see if there's one in the, no, there's not even one in the uh, sort of glove compartment. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not bothered about cup holders. So it doesn't really bother me, but it might bother you. Again, some of the uh, higher spec models actually have um, sort of armrests which come up here, both on the driver's seat and the passenger seat there. But this is a more basic model, as I say, so it hasn't got that. But if you go a bit more upmarket, you can have a nice old armrest which come out here. But what you do get is this huge bin thing, and that actually slides back. That is absolutely huge in there. And I keep a thing of a great big thing of multi wipes in there, but it is absolutely huge. And I saw a lady do a review of one of these on a YouTube video, and she had quite a big lady's handbag, and she put that in there. Um, so it just gives you an idea how much space is in there, and then you can close that, and wherever you put is well away from everything. So what else have you got? You got your normal heating controls. I like this three dial setup. It's so easy. And a lot of vehicles are more complicated, but I, I just like this where you've got your direction, windscreen, windscreen and feet, feet and face, and then just your sort of fan speeds and your hot and cold. Nice and simple, just the way I like it. And then you've got your aircon button, heated rear window, Power windows. It's actually got a, cig a cigarette lighter, which is rare in this day and age, but got a cigarette lighter there. Then usual button for sort of central lock in and um, hazards. Oh, what else have we got here? The, it's got a nice, clean, simple, and easy to read uh, dash there. Just the normal thing, just the tachometer on the left, speed on the right, your fuel and temperature gauges, and then you've got your warning lights at the bottom. Don't really need much more than that, do you? And then you've got electric, you've got electric mirrors, and I, th I think they're electrically heated, although uh, not totally sure on that, but they're certainly electrically adjustable, both sides. And it's also got cruise control as well. So there's your cru cruise control stuff. Sort of took me a little while to learn how to use that cruise control. It's not overly complicated, but it's not totally user friendly or intuitive either. But at least you've got cruise control. But yeah, though it's quite a basic one model, this one, um, you do have yeah, really everything I need. You've got a radio. You got the radio, you got the cruise control, electric mirrors, air conditioning, remote central locking. That's really all, all I need, personally speaking. And then just sort of flipping you around a little bit, uh, you can see just how much room there is in the back there. It's just what you can see there, the vacuum cleaner and thing only goes about a third of the way back. And then under that cover, you've got load more room and it really is an insane amount of room and it's really a very very versatile vehicle this I and mean, i can you can either use it as a works vehicle which is what i'm doing now and which is sort of the configuration i have it in most of the time or you can put the seats up and have it as a, a five seat vehicle again still with a big 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 boot or you can take the, the rear seats out all together and you've basically got a van with a nice flat load space and when, when, we've been, when we've been camping that's what we've done we've taken the rear seats out and then we've got a, a big tent that goes in there all our camping beds camping chairs tables and about a ton of other stuff that we take camping and it all goes in the back of here no problem at all so anyway, uh, what I'll do is I'll go inside now and I'll sort of wrap up this video and we'll go from there. So, 
I hope that's given you a little bit of insight as to what it's like to own and drive a Citroen Berlingo multi-space of uh, you know, kind of 2016 vintage. And I thought it'd be particularly enlightening, especially as I've personally owned it for eight months now and I've done 5,000 miles in it. So it's, you know what a lot of these vehicle reviews are like, they just borrow them and drive around in them for a day or two or whatever, they, whatever it is they do, or they've just bought it, but they've only owned it for a week or two. Probably still in that kind of honeymoon period of vehicle ownership. But I can tell you what this Bilingo has been like after quite a lot of months of ownership and quite a lot of miles and I can tell you whether I recommend it or not. Uh, first of all, I'll sort of tell you my sort of biggest like about the vehicle and then my sort of biggest dislike and then whether I recommend it or not. I guess my biggest like is the economy. You know, despite the fact that you've got a lot of room inside for all sorts of things, it is so, so economical on the diesel. You can literally do sort of four or even 500 miles and it's still only sort of, you know, 40 to 50 pounds to fill back up again. And yeah, it's just so, so economical. It's really, really good. So that, that's what I like about it the most. That it's so easy on the pocket as far as uh, diesel's concerned. Biggest dislike? Um, well, I guess the acceleration on it isn't particularly good um and i think the quoted figure is about 14 seconds although it does feel a lot more lively than that figure would suggest and i think the main reason is when you set off and it's in first and it's changing on the auto box from first to second and from second into third as well it's there seems to be a bit of a lag uh quite a bit of hesitancy and, and lag which i think is where it gains on the seconds or loses out on the acceleration um, but if it wasn't for that it'd be quite a bit more lively and certainly when you're accelerating from say third and fourth find those gear changes are a lot more smooth and quick and if you're accelerating I don't know from about 20 miles an hour up to 50 miles an hour it, it does feel pretty lively so it's, it's not as slow as those figures would suggest but it's there again it's not the quickest vehicle in the world and there is that sort of hesitancy which isn't a fault it's just a what's how the gearbox is made i think and you know so that just makes driving it slightly weird but you soon get used to it and i guess if it was any faster you'd be losing out on what i like about it so much the the fuel economy of course so I guess that's what you can say is my sort of biggest like and dislike. Now, do I recommend it? Well, I've owned it now, as I say, for eight months, done 5,000 miles in it. And do I recommend it? Well, I can sort of say definitely, heartily recommend the Citroen Berlingo Multispace. And it's just such a practical vehicle, such an economical vehicle so versatile with what you can do with it very very comfortable and it's got everything on it i need really so so yeah i uh, i can highly recommend it now if you want me to make any more videos about the berlingo i've probably missed out on things or glossed over a few things i know i had it in my sort of van mode i, I could next video if you want me to i could sort of show you it with the uh, rear seats actually in place so if you'd like that please like and leave what you'd like me to do next as far as filming that vehicle is concerned in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos as well so it's been another baldy tim's reviews thanks for watching